Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep dot com. My name is Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. So Andre has just picked up a little biscuit out of his. He's got this. Uh, little bowl of cat dry cat food biscuits sometimes he has ferret food sometimes you know I kind of alternate it and he picked one up and just dropped it in his big bowl of water which was a bit strange so yeah this is let me bore you to sleep but please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. I'm doing this a little bit earlier than normal. It's five minutes past 11 in the evening. I have a tendency of recording these early hours of the morning. And I kind of wish I had now because Andre is ever so, ever so, ever so active. For some reason. Hello. Can you hear him? He's just climbed onto me. What do you want, mate? What are you doing? Huh? No cuddles. Is that what you want? You want cuddle waddles? Yeah? No? You can have a cuddle. I just don't want you scraping against the microphone because I'm trying to make a recording. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I like to give him massages. So I massage down his spine and I massage his tummy gently. You know, just in the same way you would a human being. Um, Because I used to, I actually learned how to massage humans. And just by gently, like, little presses and it helps to free up the organs and A kind of massage in the back of his neck as well a little bit just gently yeah you like that he liked it so much he's run off when I said you like that he said no let go and he ran off now he's got into his bag to hide I think he has conversations with that bag as well. I think it's his best friend. I'm sure I heard him just say, went to the bag. So, bag said, hi Andre, you are alright? He said, yeah, I've got to hide in here for a bit. That bloke, that man, he's doing that massaging thing again. He's weird. It's a bit uncalled for though, isn't it, really? I just... It's healing, touch, being touched is healing. You know, if it's, you know, in a loving way. Just having human touch. I don't mean when you're squashed together on a train, on a tube underground train or something. That's not necessarily a, a healing experience, but... Yeah, I quite like doing the massage course, but didn't lead anywhere in the end. I didn't finish it. I didn't finish the the year long course, but I did. I did pretty much all of the actual massage part, but there were other parts to it: the reflexology, anatomy, which I wasn't 
majorly interested in. And then there was the aromatherapy. Again, mildly interested. And then there was the Indian head massage. So the anatomy was all the way... No, was the anatomy up? Might have just been in the first bit. I'm not sure. But the massage started, and then there's reflexology, and then the aromatherapy kind of started as well. But it was very much focused on the massage but I quite like to have well, I wouldn't necessarily want to go back now but it would have been good to have completed the course I quite like the idea because it was Swedish massage I think it's called that I was learning I like the idea of like, working on a cruise ship massaging people but the thing is and those that have never done it probably won't they won't realise massaging someone if you're doing it properly it's really hard work physically it's especially when you've got like the white costume on which I had to wear and I suppose it depends where you, you know, it could be a different, a different kind of costume, depends where you work, I suppose. But I massaged, I got a lot of people outside of the course to practice on. And some females, some men. And one of the people I did was, he was uh, in charge of the gym that I went to. And he was massive. He was actually just big, like a bodybuilder. And it was so much hard work because he was, he wanted me to go deeper. So, which I never thought, I never thought I'd be in a position where I'd a, you know, practically a naked man laying on a face down on a like a table shouting out deeper, deeper it was, yeah go deeper so, but because he was so muscular his his muscles needed more more work and it was, it was tiring I felt like I'd had a workout myself and I was sweating not just with him, but just whenever I did a massage, I'd be like sweating. So it's definitely very physical. And there's lots of stretching, you know, so you kind of, you're, you're leaning over to, let's say if you're massaging the, if they're laying on their back, no, laying on the stomach, and you're massaging like the bottom of you know where the spine, the, well, you know the spine, most people have them, and basically just above the hips from the lower back moving upwards, there's, I forget what it's called now, but you lean over and you kind of massage and pull up the skin, it sounds weird, you don't pull the skin up, but you kind of massage the skin up on the opposite side of the body so you have to lean over and it's it's okay if you were someone that's very slight of frame but when you got um, a bigger person especially this bodybuilder but it would be the same with me as well you know it's, it's you probably need a ladder to get over my because <laughs> Because my belly would push me up to about... My bum would probably be hitting the f ceiling, I reckon. And so... No, I'm not that bad. Although, to be fair... I have lost some weight. But I had a picture taken of me last night with Andre. And he was wrapped in this uh, orange towel. And my friend wrapped him up. And I thought he looked so cute. So I took a picture of him. And then I thought, oh, please take a picture of me and him together 
and uh, he did but there's he did like a a headshot with me and Andre but then he also took a body shot as well and just seeing my belly there was reminded me well just I deleted it because I uploaded it by accident onto Facebook and I deleted it because it's weird because nobody that listens to me thinks that I'm slim probably because I don't I tell everybody and anyone that knows me knows that I'm not uh, particularly slim but I probably don't paint a very good picture of my of myself maybe physically but I'm all right up to my ankles and that's where it kind of goes wrong no I've, I've got quite nice legs not nice uh, that's probably not the right word um, I suppose kind of just average legs you know my legs are okay I haven't got big legs So it's really more upper body where I have it and I've got no idea if I've got a big bum because I've never seen it I genuinely don't know I might, be, I, might, I might be walking around the street knocking people over by accident knocking children out of their prams because my bum's wobbling all over the place knocking people off their bikes hitting people on the other side of the road when I'm walking I don't know because I can't see it I can't see my bum I don't know how big it is you know when I was younger I had a tiny little bum you could say well we all did we were babies you know I don't mean when I was a baby I mean when I was even you know early 20s I was I was just very slim and I had to uh, didn't have much of a bum at all really and I kind of wanted to have more weight and I got my wish but it wasn't quite it wasn't, wasn't quite the dream that I imagined it wasn't the wonder, the wonderful experience that I thought it would be it was nice when it started. When I first started putting weight on, I felt so much stronger. I think I looked better facially as well because my, my face wasn't so skinny. Because uh, I was quite a. I think I got quite. A, potentially, I got quite a big head. But my face, my cheeks didn't really match it. But now my. You know, I haven't got as many chins as I used to have. I used to have there have been times when I had about 17 chins but now I've probably down to about 6 so it's pretty good and I can live with that well the doctor says that perhaps I can't live with that and I need to kind of <laughs> reduce my cholesterol is a little bit high as well but I know, I've started going to the gym, so although I didn't go today, but I will go tomorrow, hopefully, because I'm planning. If you listen to this, I'm planning to go to sleep earlier tonight. Because last night, or it was this morning, I went to bed at seven a.m. because I was working on my websites, and I get caught up in it. I really do. I get really, really caught up in all the work involved and doesn't really feel like work because I do quite enjoy it. But uh, I managed to get the freesleephypnosis.com website up and running. So that's now up and working. So that's got all my sleep stuff, not the None of the courses that I've done, none of the 
let me bore you to sleep or the deep sleep whispers none of that stuff just the actual standalone long sleep sessions the hypnosis sessions and there's I think there's about 44 and most of them are about an hour or so some a little bit less but they yeah that's kind of um Surprised I haven't made more. Oh, I, find I have made more, but I lost a few over the years. But so that website's going to be, I'm just going to leave it there and then people can come along and find it. So I'm kind of pleased in a way with the websites. So I've got the letmeboreyoutosleep.com, which is this one. Uh, let's see if I want to go the deepsleepwhisper.com which is for the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis Podcast I've got 73 or 74 recordings on there and I'll be making some new ones as well starting either today or tomorrow well it'll be tomorrow now and there's also I've got another podcast which is really popular and it's the sleep what is it sleep hypnosis weekly or it's weekly sleep hypnosis I can never remember the order of those words but it's those three words sleep hypnosis weekly I think dot com and that's got the I think it's seven recordings on there but that's continuously getting people coming back every day to listen to those recordings. And then I've got how many is that? Then that's let me see. If you, and then there's the free sleep hypnosis dot com, which is the one that I made yesterday, and that's got all of my sleep hypnosis sessions on there all the standalone ones and then I've got another website which is the jasonnewland.com website which I'm in the process of building however here's an idea and I don't know what you think here's my idea I've been trying to work out a way to turn what I love doing into a career, you know? I kind of think that, I feel like this has been my career for the last 13 years. That's how I feel, even though during that time of been at university full time for three years and I was a counsellor full time for about three or four years and uh, and then I went back and I worked in insurance and then I was been unemployed for four years now but I still feel that even though I've not been earning a living doing this it's still my career you know it's still the thing that I think about I think about it when I go to bed I think about it when I wake up um, not always sometimes I think about I need to go to the toilet when I wake up if I'm honest that's usually the first thing I think about uh, but it's something I think about a lot of the time most of the time so it makes sense that I would have a little ferret in the background of recordings crunching away on these little cat biscuits why has he got to do that now it's 24 hours in a day he sleeps about 18 hours a day why does he have to do this while I'm making a recording Seriously, he sleeps about 18 hours. 
which means he's awake for four hours. Not all in one go either. So, you know, he'll be asleep for a few hours, get up, go back to sleep for a few more hours. There's usually a period when he's asleep for a good four or five hours. And what he's doing now is he's taking the biscuits and he's hiding them around the flat. So basically when he's hungry and he hasn't got, had his food yet, he's got these little uh, stashes of food that he can dig into. Mm. It's very conniving. Or clever, I suppose, could be another word for it. I do wonder if a neighbour downstairs can hear his little f footsteps running around. I hope not. I can hear it, but I'm here, you know, I'm I'm in the same the same floor as him, but I really hope that the person downstairs can't hear him. It's a little dream of mine. It hasn't always been a dream, but recently I like the idea I need to get a new carpet because Andre's ruined this carpet. I've ruined part of it, but he's ruined most of it. Um, and I need to get a new carpet, but what I want to get is like the best, most soundproofest carpet that you can buy. Which may mean saving up for a long time. I don't know how much it's going to cost, and just doing one room at a time. So I'll just do the living room first and then the bedroom, you know, so just do them separately. Maybe even have different colours. You don't have to have the same colour carpet in every room, which I have at the moment. Although I say the same colour, the carpet's very different colour to what it was when I Oh, when it was first born, it had a different colour. It's um, lots of stains on it. I'm thinking of getting one of those fax machines. Not fax, as an F-A-X, but V-A-X. And they clean your carpet. I'm thinking of getting one, but... I mean, it'd be nice to... To clean the carpet, it'd be lovely. God, he's still running around. He's got so much energy. Yeah, I'd like to get a to clean the carpet. I thought about sort of trying to pay someone to do it, but it means having them in my home, and I mean, I'd rather just kind of do it in my own time and do a part of the carpet as and when I feel like it, you know. So Andre's now at the front door scratching, trying to get out. I don't know what is wrong with that boy, honestly. I took him out twice already today. Two walks. And the last one was only about half an hour ago. He's about to jump. Oh no, he's not. That's it. Crinkle all the carrier bags now, Andre. That's a good boy. Yeah. Oh, your daddy's little angel. So here's my idea about trying to change or, you know, create a career for myself. So noisy. <laughs> See if this was a hypnosis session, I'd have to stop. I'd have to just give up on the recording because I 
suppose it's quite nice, the sound, because you know you've got, I've got this wild animal running around in my flat. Having a good old crunch on his food. And, you know, so, well, he is tamed, yeah, to a degree. The only way he's tamed is he doesn't bite me. The rest of it is is he does exactly what he wants to do. I can't train him. In fact, if anything, he trains me. He lets me know when he wants me to get him his food. When we walk in, he lets me know when he wants me to carry him. Because he'll stop and he'll put his he put his hand or both his hands on my foot on my shoe or maybe he sort of ju like jumps up a little bit you know to my shin like puts his hand on my shin but even if he puts his hand on my shoe looks up at me he wants me to carry him so I do I pick him up in the summer sometimes it's just because make some weird noises see in the summer he likes to be picked up sometimes and then just for a rest because it's a bit hot he gets a bit overheated and then after maybe 30 seconds he wants to get down again in the winter it might be a bit too cold for him he wants to get up and he wants to climb inside my jacket to get warm and then he's in there for a minute and he wants to get out again. You know, it's, it's, he does whatever he wants to do whenever he wants to do it. And the biscuits are supposed to be good for his teeth as well, helps to clean his teeth. Because the rest of the time he has uh, cat food, you know, like the wet food but he only eats the food that's got gravy in it. He won't eat the cat food with jelly. Don't like it. Which is weird because his uncle, who uh, was another like polecat, he, he'd eat anything. He was happy, he just eat very adventurous. Andre is fussy as anything. If anyone gives him anything, like when we're out, sometimes people will give him something to eat, you know, just like little, various different things. He'll sniff and he turns his nose up at everything. If I go to give him stuff, sometimes he'll have it, sometimes again he just like, no, no thanks. If it's in my mouth, he wants it. It wouldn't matter, even if it was jellied cat food, you know, with jelly, he'd eat it if it's out of my mouth. He's like a little baby, he wants to be breastfed. But that hurts. <laughs> no, I, he did bite my nipple once when he was a baby. I wasn't trying to breastfeed him, it wasn't anything weird like that. He just, I think it was the summer and I was holding him because I got him in September so it was still quite nice weather. I had my dressing gown on and I was just cuddling him and he just lunged and bit my nipple. And, ow, that's a sensitive area. He's now crawled up on me again, he's now cuddling me. What is it you want, Andre? Oh, you want to get down again? That's it, now scratch at the carpet. That's, that's another noise we can uh, introduce into the podcast. He's now, now gone into his, into his bag again. His brown bag with fluorescent bogey sickly colour of green and yellow 
I don't know what that colour is. Lime, must maybe, yeah. Just uh, stripes down the s sides, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah, down the sides. Or down the ends, rather. See, what I was thinking of doing then, so to try and continue this as a career, I thought I could maybe make some premium MP3s downloadable for a cost, but just um, not the stuff that I'm already doing, but maybe a version of what I'm doing, but for example, uh, let me see, uh, let me bore you to sleep, I could maybe do a two hour or three hour version, maybe four hour even, who knows, five hours, but that's quite a long time to be talking. And with the deep sleep whisper sessions, I could maybe do an hour long one because usually they're about 20 minutes. Or maybe do, you know, a two or three, four hour one. So that's what I'm thinking about to maybe um, to help finance this and maybe even finance living a life, you know, paying the rent and buying my food and all that stuff. Because I worked out these new websites I've got, the as well as all the other stuff I was doing, works out I think about 70, 80 pound a year for each website to run, including the host and the maybe a hundred pound a year and the domain name, which is about 16 pound a year. But it costs 21 pounds for five websites to be built with, with WordPress, which I've now got all five websites. So for me to get another five websites is another £21. Plus, um, normally you can get a, they do a discount in the first year for the, for the domain name, so it costs maybe nine ninety nine for the first year and then £16 the following years. And... So I might get another 10. Not yet though. Because I think I've got about 30 podcasts. Maybe a little bit less, I'm not sure, but I've got quite a few. So to have a website for each one. Uh, What's that? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So let's say I've got 25, 30, so it's 6. So it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 126 pound a month just for the web space and for the websites. So I suppose I could offer the opportunity for people to sponsor the website just to cover the costs, you know, sponsor the Let Me Boy to Sleep, you know, website for a hundred pound a year, as an example, you know, but we'll see, see what's, uh, 
what comes up. Yeah. I feel quite relaxed. I like that feeling, you know, when you're just laying down or sitting in a comfortable chair and it's quiet. And it may may not even be quiet outside, but it's quiet inside. Inside your mind is quiet. And you're relaxed. And you're receptive to the idea that you can just sleep easily. And... By listening to me just talking can actually have some kind of therapeutic usefulness. And to help you to just drift off. Easily. And in a natural way. And that can be quite a nice, nice little experience to just relax into it and let the experience happen. I quite like that idea of just sinking into the feeling of sleepiness and knowing that there's nothing that any of us needs to do in this moment calm actually a really nice feeling one that I personally enjoy
feeling calm, feeling 